course you want to be a champion. Of course you want to be working towards winning titles. Be happy, but never satisfied. Better than ever. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this live web stream from Brampton, Ontario, which will feature the Open Division Grand Finale, which will feature a typical East Coast versus West Coast confrontation. University of Victoria facing off Queen's University. Both of these teams have just qualified for the Grand Finale. What? Less than 20 minutes ago, yeah. and they will now be fighting for this national championship a gold medal. My name is Etienne Fournier. I will have the great privilege of hosting this web stream, and I will have the immense pleasure of sharing the mic with one of the most talented color commentator this side of the universe, Devon Asmoda. Welcome, Hi. Devon, and thanks for being with us. Hi, everyone. Devon Asmoda coming to you here. Uh, so thankful to be joined with Etienne for this huge final between Queens and UVic. So these two teams had very different paths getting to the final. We had uh, Queens University going 3-0 yesterday to top their pool, beating Ottawa, Sherbrooke, and Victoria yesterday. And then uh, just taking care of business in their quarters and semis um, en route, UVic. The complete opposite story. They went 0-3 yesterday, which meant they were winless. They were fourth in the pool, forced to play against the uh, top seed out of the other pool in Manitoba. Big upset win over Manitoba. Also another big upset win over Ubik to be in the final. So the tale of two different uh, teams. And Queen University has came here in Brampton with a long... Uh, they were on a, on a mission. They want to go back home with a gold medal around their neck. They have done. They have proven to be uh, the most, uh, the mo uh, I guess, the, the 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 powerhouse of this national championship so far. Uh, we just witnessed their wins against the University of Montreal in the first half. They took control uh, by scoring a win and securing that break. Even though Montreal did a great comeback in the second half, they were able to shut down Montreal with great defensive effort. So they are here, they are one victory away of achieving their goal at this national championship. Well, it's a great story also for the University of Victoria. As you mentioned, they were winning, they were winless yesterday, but still it to the final. Yeah, and I was able to be on the sideline of that semi. You saw UVic uh, take control as well, going taking half 8-3 against the U. University of Ottawa, a team that just beat them 13-6 the day before. So it just shows you, um, they said they were helped by a call by Bark to inspire the team to just play better. And also a return of Captain Jonah Teal to the lineup also helped boost the team's morale. So the horn was heard signaling that we are ready to kick off this Open Division Grand Finale here, Brampton, Ontario, 2023 University Ultimate Championship. Thanks for being with us. And we wish everybody a great game. And this is number eight, Ben uh, Sigurdsson with the pole here for Queens. Just tossing it in between themselves to, uh, to get uh, some touches. Queens is known for their many zones. They can come out in a 3-3-1, three, three, a 2-3-2, two, two, and we'll see what they do here in this opening point. Victoria wearing the white jerseys, Queen wearing the yellow jerseys. Victoria kicking off this game. 
on offense with a great long pass, but it's being denied by number 21. Miller LaBelle was the intended receiver with this nice long hawk from, I believe, Pinit, Pinit Nuzo. There's two Pinit Nuzo into the Victoria's roster, so two brothers playing together. There is Justin and Max. And Matt. So yeah, number 51, uh, the older brother, and uh, the younger brother, number zero, Max. Zone defense played by Victoria. So weather-wise, the Vaughn, we have a windy condition, winds blowing from mostly left hand side of the screen towards the right hand side. So Queen now facing off the wind going. So whoever scores on the left hand side of your screen will have an advantage, of course. So I guess that was the intention with Victoria throwing the disc long to put pressure on Queens and then in hopes of getting a turnover near the end zone. Yeah, so for the viewers at home, you see that it's a bit of a 45 degree wind coming from the top left corner of your screen down to the bottom right corner. So. Um, getting in this upwind break going from right to left is crucial because, you know, it's a lot har harder to throw upwind than downwind. And that's why you saw the huck come out so easily from Uvic there. But Queens right now navigating this 3-3-1 uh, zone from Uvic, putting pressure just uh, it seems like it's pushing them back a little right now, Etienne. Queen can barely earn some yardage. And they've, done, they've pro completed probably 20 passes and they went up, what about, they're almost out of their red zone. But... This pass is intercepted by Pelinuzzo. Quickly, Victoria moving upward. Number 14, Robinson with the disc resetting to LaBelle. LaBelle faking the scuba. Pelinuzzo giving an up the line pass, but it's no, it was denied. The intended receiver could not get a hold on this disc and Queen back with the possession. It was a call. Not sure what the call was about. The observers ensuring everything is all right. And it looks like there might have been a violation called on Miller checking the disc in, but uh, seems like with observers on the field, you know, you can always trust that they will uh, keep the game moving smoothly. Queen with the disc, Uvic putting pressure with a zone defense. Going from left to right, not earning much yardage, still hanging on. Not much room into Uvic zone defense going on the left hand side feeding Wong and some bird it was another call this is being holded by Miller but it will go back one pass servers discussing with the players it's a foul call I believe which is being challenged. We hope for a quick resolution, which we are having. This is now back into play. And you Miller. See, and you see uh, Uvix just sticking with this zone here, getting some success, pushing Queens back. They're not getting too much, uh, too much distance forward. Lefty reset by Miller. Feeding on yards. Quickly centering the disc, going back and forth, staying steady, looking for a hole, which Uvic is not providing any so far. Miller, great pass and run, going long. There was a room and great cut, great catch, but oh, unfortunate drop by number eight, Sigurdsson. But what a great catch by number 15, McFadden. And this is Petnuto uh, picking up the disc, putting up a big shot again. <laughs> Miller's just standing there for the block. 
can see that UVic strategy just put the disc along and forced Queen to turn it over near their end zone. On yard. Missing some spin into his flick. Granting the disc back to Uvic. Petit Nuzo back with the disc. Will he go long? He resets it to number 55, Baird. Uvic moving onward. Now Davis with the disc. Great scuba, deep scuba, but blocked by Queen. LaBelle was the intended receiver, but another turnover going still on his own defense, but we're going long for Queen, just trying hopes of getting some space. Uvic quickly. Now there's a two-man advantage. Just a pass and run, and the LaBelle score the first point of this game. So it's an offense hold by the Uvic squad. So one nothing for the white jersey. And that was just a great uh, defensive stand by the Queens D-line there. You saw Miller doing a great job playing last back, baiting a lot of deep shots and getting a lot of decent, preventing uh, Uvic from doing that huck and pin strategy of just putting up a prayer. And then on the other side, just a great discipline by Uvic, just staying, um, staying strong into their stances, getting Ds back, working the disc downwind. So weather-wise, since it's Canadian Championship, we need to talk about the weather. It would not be Canadian Championship if we were not talking about the weather. So it is cloudy, it is windy, it is cold, but there's no other place I'd rather be than right here, right now, with you sharing this game. Yeah, definitely. Uh, there are a few places I might want to be instead of out in Brampton, really? nine degree weather, really? but uh, <laughs> I'm sure that's nothing that uh, Tim Hortons hot chocolate couldn't fix. As long as you have Tim Martin hot chocolate, you you can you can move on. I, I think, believe. yeah, we'll see. So, oh, back here we have um, this Queens O line that is star studded. You have the likes of Guinness Sekera, um playing for a Strawberry Kitty Kisses this past summer, TCU twenty four in the mixed division. You have Pork from the U twenty four Open team, Kennedy from that U twenty four mixed team. Um, just so much talent across the board on this Queens roster. Park. Feeding his teammate Gainer going midfield, but it's blocked. One player down, number 12. I think the Tomlinson claiming he was a foul. Hard to tell from our perspective. It seems there was some bumping in there. Number 11, Margison. Yeah, it just looked, his point of view. Yeah, it just looked like Tomlinson had to leave his feet to try to get to that disc and uh Margison just getting to the space first. So it I, I think this foul might become overturned if they go to the observer. But again, it's up to the players to talk it out. And you see the two green jerseys, the uh, two observers discussing about their interpretation of what just happened. So as they're being asked to rule out this last action, this last call, will that be a turnover? Who knows? And for the viewers at home uh, that might not know why there's two uh, green jerseys out there, uh, they're observers, um, Jeff and Linda. and Linda. They are Ultimate's version of referees. So Ultimate players still have the ability to call their own fouls and discuss plays, but observers are just there to make some active calls like in and out of bounds, in and out of the end zone, keep the time going in between points, and they can also help solve this dispute as a neutral third-party person. So they're just there to kind of keep the keep the keep the flow of the game going, but not as strict as other referees in some sports like basketball or hockey you might see. So it looks like this foul will be contested unless they're going to the observer. So still some discussion going around. Of course we're always trying to resolve those discussions as quickly as possible. So the finals, unlike the other games in this tournament, will be 90 minutes long. The other, the other games were 80 minutes long. Yeah, you want to just, uh, you hate to have a game end on hard cap. So it's great that they have 90 minutes to just see who the better team is here in this uh, final round. Queen 
in motion. Going back and forth. Coster acting as a reset part. Probably the tallest player on the Queen's roster. Acting also as a quarterback. Guna Sequeira and Park acting as a true lead member of this O-line. Nice left to right movement. It's now Gainer with the disc wearing two different shoes. One white, one dark. We love ultimate fashion. Coster with the disc. Right in the middle, Malek. Coster once again, Queens taking their time. Kind of a zone-ish pochi defense by Juvik, just containing Queens effort to score. Guna Sekera with the disc, now it's Park. I think there was a travel call, which was extremely Quickly resolved. Coster once again in the middle of the field in the red zone. Some bumping, no damage, no call. Kennedy now with the disc fakes the back end, resets to Park, going sideways to Gaynor once again. Great patience by the Queen's Squad. Great defense by UV containing Queen's effort. They are patient, a couple of yards shy of their first point in this grand finale. Yeah, and it looks like Uvic's doing a great job here with a little, like, one, four, one there, uh, just letting Queen swing it back and forth, but really clogging up the middle here with some poaches. But that is the result of poaching off players. You do leave a lot of space. So with zones like that, um, Uvic did a great job to hold Queens, but with so many options there, um, it was just inevitable that Queen was going to score at that point. And it's Guna Sekera with a great pass and run effort, opening himself up to provide the Queen squad their first point. So we have a game tie at one to kick off this open division final of the University Series 2023 edition. My name is Etienne Fournier. I'm with Devon Asmota on the mic. Such an honor to share this game with all of you. Thanks for being there. Either you're on the East Coast, finishing your lunch or your brunch, who knows? Maybe on the West Coast, taking that second or third coffee of your Sunday morning. Hope you enjoy it. We love October. Why do we love October, Devon? We there's love hockey starting, there's basketball, there's NFL, there's the CFL playoffs, and there is CUUC. So if you're a sports fan in October, well, you are a busy person. You are a busy person. Um, but especially if you're a Frisbee fan, you know, you get the Canadian University Ultimate Championships right now. And then next week you have the USAU Club Nationals. So lots of Frisbee two weekends in a row. So we have Dixon here on the pull. Um, he's going to be joined by Gunasekara and the likes of Brown and Miller again. And Uvic trying to hold going downwind. Etenuzo going long. Two yellow jerseys, one wide, and then his brother catching the disc. The two players shaking hands because they provided a bold effort. But what a pass, but what a catch. A brother to brother point. Wow. And that was just Petsenuzo to Petsenuzo. Um, Justin getting the disc, receiving it, and putting up an absolute shot to his brother, Max. Uh, just brothers playing catch at this point. And I believe I saw the Petinuzzo's uh, dad along the sidelines. I'm sure he's a pretty proud of uh, his uh, two sons right now. On the, even before that point, he was proud of his two sons, obviously, but especially over that last action. Oh, yeah. The dad has been, uh, Mr. Petinuzzo has been around the field complex, really friendly, saying hi to everybody, giving us some nice information on the team here even helping us with some jersey numbers. So uh, I'm sure he's a proud father here today. Such a great guy, such a great family. Very athletic, two sons. Queen on the left-hand side on the receiving end of this UVic pool, which will be thrown in a couple of seconds from now. 
Yeah, so this is Cochran pulling for uh, Uvic. They also have Teal and Gao on the line, so uh, probably Savage. Uh, and we'll see what they can do here. Victoria leading 2-1 two to one in this finale. All three points were scored on your right hand side of the field. Let's see what will be Queen's strategy. Will they keep hold of the disc against Victoria's zone defense? Or will they just throw it long and put the pressure on UVic's D-line to go upwind? Who knows? In the meantime, Queen's in control. Park with the disc. Zone defense by the white jerseys. Gainer to Park. Park finding a quick hole. Great bid by LaBelle, but it was a little too short. It's not a LaBelle, it's number 17, Edgel. But it's a turn. And it looks like that 4 2 1 zone uh, from Uvic was providing a lot of pressure for them. And that was just um, Pfeiffer getting the block there for Uvic. Cochran and going long, floaty disc. It's a fest in the end zone, but it's being denied by Queen with another opportunity of keeping a hold of this offense. Park going long, crossing the field. Number nine, Costa is there on the receiving hand. Everybody jumps, but a little too early. So great defensive effort by Uvic, just putting pressure on Coster as a receiver to this game. Yeah, and that was Margison just doing the thing that uh, they tell you to do. If you can't get to the disc, try to make the receiver go up early so they also miss it too. Queen setting their wall defense, which has been proven very successful throughout this tournament. We've seen it in the semifinal against Montreal. They have called the Blue Jerseys a ton of trouble. Disc is floating, and it's another defense by... But the one, one, one players stay down. It seems number one from Uvic Greenham. Gao. Gao. Gao taking an injury sub and Agile. All uh, right, it looks like, sorry. Petsonuzo is going to be coming on for him. taking the place of the injured player. Hopefully, no serious harm done for Gao. Queen resetting on the left-hand side. Coster, Guna Sekera, quickly moving on. Tomlinson, Coster once again, a few yards away from a point. Oh, Coster! Having to twist in order to secure that disc with both hands, providing Queen their second point of the game, making this game a time one at twos. No break point so far. Yeah, and you can just tell, just uh, back and forth with four holes this game, 2-2 two -two for both teams, getting that up one break will be so crucial because it's just been proven so difficult for, uh, you know, teams throughout the day on stream. So we have seen so far a lot of depth in both of these teams' handling skills, even though the weather conditions are not very, very friendly. It's windy, no rain. Let's cross our finger to keep it this way. So we're attending the Open Division Final right now. Our next assignment will be, guess what? The Women's Division, The Women's of Final. Course. So you have two women's semifinals going on right now. You have the University of Ottawa versus McMaster University on one side of the bracket. And then you have um, Laval versus, I think, Manitoba on the women's side. All of these games are looking to be very, very exciting. And Devon, how many teams have attended that national championship? I think it's 60, 60 teams. 60. So many university teams. This is so good for the development and growth of the sport. Um, it just shows you the depth of Can Canadian Ultimate building, just getting experience at all levels. So almost a 1,000 athletes gathering here in Brampton, Ontario, to compete in the, in the three division of this national championship, Division 1, 2, and 3, both open. 
and women's division. Uvic with the disc going long. It's a hot pass in it, Redfin, but it's definitely too long. Yeah, and that was the fence. Yeah, and that was Petsunuto looking for his younger brother, Petsunuto, uh, just not being able to replicate the magic from the previous point. But it's okay because now Uvic has a great field positioning to set their zone. Let's see if uh, the likes of uh, Gunasekura, Oyenhart, and Dixon are enough to break through this win and uh, help power Queens to their first break of the game. Ornyard is there. Dixon is there. Acting as handler. Gunasekera. Now to Dixon. Near the sideline in the coffin corner. Ornyard. Gunasekera. In their own goal line. Nice little blady throw. Finding Jones. Getting some room to breathe for the yellow jerseys. Gunasekera calling a timeout. They say, hey, now that we have room to breathe let's huddle talk breathe in breathe out we have a break of 14 feet yeah and he just getting the disc in the middle of the field around their brick mark noticing that they have a chance to get a break so you know you get two timeouts per half um per team so why not use one of them to give you a big advantage in the game and devon what are your thoughts on how important it is to get the first break of a not only a final, but whatever game. How important is that psychologically speaking? Um, I'd say very important. You hear it all the time in uh, sports. You want to draw first blood. You want to get the first punch to the gut of the other team. Just psychologically, it makes you. Uh, it makes the other team doubt themselves. It makes them know like they can beat you. They can break you. They can uh, kind of empower their will on you. So from a psychological perspective, you definitely want to get that first advantage because it's going to stick around in the minds of them. It's going to cause doubt in the team. But in this game, for sure, you definitely want to get that first upwind break because if you get that first upwind break, essentially you can just trade out downwind holds from there, and that's a recipe for winning the game. So do you think Uvic will get back with their zone defense or person-to-person -person defense? It looks like they're going back into their 4-4-1 diamond zone defense. Sorry, 4-2-1 diamond zone defense. Uh, just leaves open the swings for Queens, but you're counting on them to make a mistake from swinging the disc side to side. On yard to Dixon. On the sideline, resetting to Gunasekera. Flicking it on the right side, feeding Wang. Gunasekera once again, on York, Dixon. Great pass, a great bid. Pete Nuzo saying, uh uh, this ain't going anywhere. I'm blocking it. Nice layout defense by Juvik wearing number zero. And his brother hucking it long. Lebel is there on the receiving end, but it was blocked by Queen. There was somebody bumping, no harm's done. Two players shaking hands to say, hey, great fight. And I'm pretty sure LeBel said, well, great fight, but next time I'll get it. Yeah, and it looks like Uvic is not shy to huck it on this downwind end. Um, taking many shots here from Pat Sinuso. Queen having won all their game throughout this three-day competition, Uvic losing all three games yesterday in division one pool play so the kind of the cinderella story here at this national championship university series queen were ranked second overall ranking and cinderella story is right for the past few seasons when uvic decided to come out east coast uh they've not made it to division one they've been in the friday qualifier and once losing in the game to go to the game to go, and another time just uh, losing in the like quarterfinals of it to Guelph both times. So it's a dream, dream result for a team that's in Div 1 for the first time, and now they find themselves in the final against Queens, who's been here many times before. We are attending, which is so far the longest point of this grand finale, Gunasekera with Queen. I've called a timeout. Uvic turned the disc over, but oh, that was kind of a kind of a mac house. I'm not sure it was purpose, but still, 
provides a good show. Guna Sekera acting as the quarterback of this Queens. D-line having to fight on offense right now. UVic zone defense being so far quite successful, forcing Queen to complete a lot of pass. And statistically speaking, one pass out of 10 will be either blocked or will land on the ground or out of bound. So Guna Sekera midfield giving some direction to his teammate. But see, here's the miscue by Queen. The statistic has proven right. Once again, number 15 cannot handle this, this McFadden. Juvik with the disc. Betson uh tapping it in. We'll see if he's looking big again. Looking big for his brother. Betenuzzo going long, but the disc was never in. So we'll put the disc back into play almost at the brick mark. So great opportunity for Queen to score a win still. Yeah, and you hear that never in call. Uh, essentially what that means is the disc went out of bounds from that huck and actually never landed in bounds. So it's going to go back in place uh, of the last place it was in bounds, and that was right there. So great field positioning for Queens here. But Petsanuzo sneaking in for another block. But a foul called on the run through D. From my perspective, it seems like a clean defense. But of course, we don't have the best perspective. Let's see the two players are discussing around. But still, the youngest of the two Petenuzo is having one hell of a game so far. We're very young into this game, but he has one hell of a tournament also. Very, very impactful. Yeah, he was on our stream before uh, in their pool play game against you, Ottawa, and both of them were definitely making plays along with the likes of Baird and TL. Um, so, Juvik will definitely have to lean on these two, these like few key players uh, to make it past the juggernaut that's Queens and with their depth of talent across the, the many lines they can put out there. Observers saying there was no foul. It was a clean defense. So it will be Juvik's disc. Petenuzo will tap it in. And Juvik, are they going to go long? Davis, oh, there was some bumping, but no arms done. Number seven, Dixon, recovering quickly from this trip. Davis on the right-hand side, catching the disc with one hand. No mark, so no stall. Petinuzzo offering himself as a reset. Left-hand side going, flick, break side, long. It's a fast in the end zone, and it's been caught. After a second effort by, I think, LaBelle, Juvik scoring their third point of this grand finale, taking a short one-point lead, 3-2 to two against Queen. And if you haven't been uh, a fan of University Ultimate in the past, you know that is classic University Ultimate. Someone puts up a big floaty huck, there's a pile, someone hits it, someone comes down with the seconds of garbage. Um, it's just the way you have to win the game sometimes. It's not the way, but the output, which is important in this in specific instance, Juvik has proven successful. So still was the fifth point of this game and all points were scored on your right hand side. So down win. Yeah, for sure. Um, both teams getting those down win holds. Uh, it's been difficult. You know, there's been a couple turns. Each team has had opportunities to break up win and have gotten very, very close. So we'll see if uh, the trend continues and if Queens can uh, get this down one hold here. Queens will probably look to uh, Park, Miller here, and Kennedy to do a lot of the heavy lifting here on the line, but they have some help. There's uh, Tomlinson and, uh, and a spew of local 613 players from the club division. Just doing a quick assessment not many players are wearing gloves actually on the queen side you see most of the players putting their hands into their pocket while waiting for the pull so they'd rather be barehanded than wearing those gloves parks resetting to gainer backward losing some yardage 
One person to person defense going long once again. And it's Malik could not get a hold on it. And there was, is there a call? The observers are standing by. It looks like that is uh, Malik making the foul call, saying that uh, the UVic player stopped him from making a second attempt when he was on the ground. However, the observer is here to try to defuse the situation. And uh, I'm not sure who's a UVic player involved in that instance. But still, they're discussing. The observers are standing by to see if they will reach out to her. And we have a sign that they're reaching out to the observers in order to rule it out. Hmm. I don't know. From my perspective, yes, there was some contact, but.
we are back for this final open division we have suffered from a few technical difficulties due to the weather conditions so please forgive us for this few minutes delay of the game it is now now five four in favor of you vic so to update you all on the action i was keeping my eye on the game while we were trying to um while we were trying to get back up on on the seventh point of the game when it was three three Yvick had a couple of turnovers, but then there was a big huck from Justin Petnuto to his brother, Max. A nice little OI backhand for the score, leading him into the end zone. So it was 4-3 to Yvick. Queens went out on O. They had a big turn um, for a deep strike from Cam Kennedy. Yvick worked it up very well, and then Deal had an unfortunate turn. So then Eli Park picks it up and hucked it to number 10 on Queens. And then uh, on the ninth point, so it was 4-4, UVic started out on offense, and they had a clean hold with a Davis hook to LaBelle uh, to go up 5-4. So here we are, 5-4 here. Queen started on O, hooked it out of bounds, and we have Pet Nuzzo bringing it up here, trying to help UVic to their first break of the game. So Both of the team are still hunting for their first break of this canal. Juvik stuck in their own goal line, moving the disc, but great zone effort by the yellow jerseys from Queens. Looking, oh, there was a little window of opportunity to find LaBelle, which Petenuto was able to find. Oh, but unfortunate, it was the pass and a little too low. Turnover, Queen. Calling a timeout. Their second timeout of this first half. Yes, and this is the point before half. So Queen's just recognizing the importance of trying to get, come into the halftime with some momentum here. So Etienne, we were down for a couple, uh, for a few minutes there. How was your break from the commentary? Uh, it was uh, quite a, a physical break of the. Uh, we were all we gathered together to fix the little issue that we have. So right now the perspective of your camera is on top, uh, probably like two two stairs up, and uh, we have to bring it down and bring it back up. But whatever the effort that was required, the good news is we are back to for this web stream. As you can hear the wind blowing into our mic, it is a windy day here in Brampton, Ontario. Yes, a very windy day here. You saw the two teams, you know, little uh, little games, feeling loose. Um, Yvick singing some songs, uh, Queens playing some games. So uh, Miller here with the disc. We have uh, Cam Kennedy isolated at the front of the stack here um, with some space, and we'll see what Yvick um, does on defense to try to stop them. So it looks like Yvick will come out in their one four two zone. Look, a little poach look here just to uh, stop the first looks from Queens. Well, Queen is having a vertical stack. Kennedy with the disc. Zone defense by the white jerseys from Victoria. Presentation resetting on the sideline. Kennedy pivoting. Great grab by number 10, Gainer. The wind picking up in the air. Malik tiptoeing the sideline to make sure that he catches the disc inside, but the disc just rolls out of his hands. And that's such a difficult catch there, Malik tried to make. Keeping your eyes on your toes to see you're not out of bounds, but keeping your eye on the disc to make sure you can actually catch it. Um, just not able to focus on both there. So, Beal picks up for the uh, UVic team. Smooth little pass, finding small windows into Queen's zone defense. Now the disc is flying. Kennedy wins that aerial battle in a spectacular way. And a quick counter strike by the yellow jerseys. It's now Gaynor with the disc finding Miller. 
on the goal line. Malik with the disc resetting. Miller fakes it to Kennedy who had one foot in the goal line and observers confirm we have a point. And not only do we have a point, but we have once again a tie game this time at five. So it's still tied 5-5. Five, five. Each team doing their uh, getting their downwind hold. So the team still searching for that first upwind break to make the difference in the game here. But at the end, um, ha about halfway through this game, who are the major contributors you see from both teams? All major contributors. I mean, uh, all rosters have contributed very, very well on both the white jerseys and the, 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 the yellow jerseys. But I would say Parks uh, on, on Queens uh, is kind of the quarterback of this Queens offense. And also Guna Sequeira. Has, has some uh, significant impact. Also, Kennedy having a lot of disc touches. But on the other side, the Pitinuzo brothers, uh, we cannot deny them that they're quite the leaders of the white jerseys quad. But let's not forget also uh, LaBelle wearing number seven, having a great impact. Also, Teal also uh, providing a great effort for the UVIC squad. Yeah, and uh, LaBelle in that. You Ottawa semi, he had some bounce to him. He got up for a lot of skies and won some quite a few air battles for uh, someone of his height. So, Park with the pull, seeing what position Yuvik can get. Queen's throwing a zone here, but Petsunuto not caring about that at all. Still trying to put it up to his brother. And it looks like Petsunuto is calling a foul on Park, saying he hit his hand in the motion of catching. It was a family pass from number 51 to number zero, the Petenuzo family. It's a foul call being ruled out, no foul. So it will be a Queen's possession. Yeah, going to the observer there, Park, uh, knowing that he didn't foul him and uh, the observer just Ruling no foul there. So, Queen's back on offense here, working in their end zone. Dixon with the disc, resetting to Kuna Sekera Park. Now to Kennedy, four handler effort by University of Queens in Kingston, Ontario. Great disc movement, Dixon, great pass and running. Midfield by Queen in a great possession, great position to potentially score the first break point of this finale. Yeah, and uh, Queens definitely knew this was the last point before half. Stacking the line with the lights of Dixon, Kennedy, Miller, Park, Gunasekara, all of these guys just to get this upwind break. And it looks like it's working out for them right now with strong handler movement, uh, getting them just outside the UVic end zone. Park with the disc. Now in the red zone, great catch by Guna Sekera securing this hole by Queen. Going on the left hand side, nice pass from the left hand left handler number 21, Miller finding Malik for the first break point of this open division final. Queen taking a one point lead, six to five which I believe will end the first half of this finale. Yeah, that's the first half. Uh, Queen stacking their lines, heading into that, trying to get as many strong throws on, on the line, and they just worked it up very smoothly, and that's the result of that. So Queen's grabbed some momentum heading into halftime. We will take a break and be back here in the next uh, five minutes. Stay tuned.
We are back for the Open Division Grand Finale featuring University of Victoria wearing the white jerseys against Queens, wearing the yellow jerseys, Queens, finishing this first half with the first break point of this game, taking a six to five lead as of now. And the story of the first half, well, all the points except one were scored on the right hand side of your screen. So all the points except one were point were scored down win. So great. We have seen some great handling skills by both of these teams. We have seen a ton of zone defense also. Looking forward to see how Uvic will recover from suffering from one break point. Yeah, and it looks like Uvic wants to recover this break pretty quickly, stacking this D-line with the likes of uh, Theo, Theo uh, we've seen on a bunch of lines, but they have uh, both Petanuto brothers here. They have LaBelle crossing over from the O-line as well. Um, Davis and Cochran are there too. So let's see if they can uh, get this break back and uh, even the game at sixes. Amazing pool by Uvic and Queens with the uh, long flick, which is caught by Park. A two pass point. What a great fashion to kick up a second half and secure, most importantly, a two point lead for Queen for the first time in this game. Yeah, and that's a nice set play there, isolating Park and Miller there. Uh, I'm sure either of them could have caught the, the score without the other there, so. Um, Queen's just taking control of this game, going up 7-5, coming out of half with a clean hold. Queen being initially seeded number two of this tournament. Number one was University of Manitoba, and they lost in the quarterfinal against U, uh, University of Victoria, if I'm not mistaken. UVic being kind of the Cinderella story of this open division. They have lost all their three pool play games yesterday. But so far, they haven't suffered any loss today, winning their quarters and their semi against Manitoba in the quarter. And now they're fighting for the gold medal against Queen, which arrived here in Brampton with one mission, get back home with a gold medal around their neck. Yeah, talking to Coach Galbraith, uh, who has so much experience coaching in the university division, he said their goal here is to win it all. And now we have, uh, yep, we have uh, Queens here uh, with a 3-3-1 three, three, zone here. The Petsunuto brothers working through it. They're looking to deny the long hawk. Now Davis with the disc finding... His teammate now is Petenuzo, the youngest of the two. Nice scuba to find LaBelle. Great zone defense by Queen, shutting down the long throws. Petenuzo looking for an option long, and here he goes, hocking it with his back end. It's a floaty disc being denied by Queen. It was a tough battle once again. This one won by number uh, nine, I believe. Yeah, and you saw Robinson there in the uh, the area against uh, Sigerson. Uh, uh, yeah, and Petsunuz was just shooting for the target that was wide open, but a little too floaty, allowing the Queen's defense to get there. So now, Gunasekera trying to help uh, work with Oynhardt and Dixon uh, to get this break for Queens and put them up even more in this final. No surprise by seeing Uvic playing his own defense, but Queens moving upward the sneaky little push pass by dixon towards on yard now guna sekera quick back end on yard dixon along the sideline zone defense remains by uvic shutting down the crash by on yard now guna sekera moving the disc from left to right Number 13, once again, just pivoting and going the other side. Dixon, nice little step to earn some more extra yards. 
queen once again being very very patient statistically speaking one pass out of 10 will be blocked or will fall down that are the odds in favor of Juvik right now but still queens looking very clean into their disc handling little travel call quickly resolve and here it is on yard miss queuing unfortunately for queen and that's why that's what you hope when you set a zone there just that volume of passes there eventually is going to be a mistake and that's what you saw owing Hart just missing the backhand to ginasekara pete nuzo going to his brother some bumping no damage quickly pass and run now label one yard shy of the end zone oh there was some bumping hmm was that intentional or not hard to tell but nonetheless one queen player is down called a foul yeah and that's just um labelle uh thinking he's pivoting hard and uh, you have the mark of Ferguson just trying to uh you know stick around trying to block a pass it looks like Ferguson is going to uh, call in in call foul and they're just talking to see what's going to happen. The result is not too different. It's either the stall count's going to come in on one or the stall count's going to come in on uh, plus one of whatever Sergison had there. So and we're arguing saw, over a mere number of stalls here. Absolutely. I just saw the Petit dad smiling at us when he witnessed the last foul call. Hmm. Is he smiling because of number seven, LaBelle? For the call, Sederson, I suspect he was smiling because he know LaBelle. But nonetheless, we're not going to judge what's happening. We have observers for that. That's their job. And it's not an easy job. So let's give a big kudos to all the observers who made this national championship a success once again. That's a tough job, especially in those weather conditions that we have right now. So... Thanks to all of them. Thanks also to Ultimate Canada for putting such a great event. And thanks also to our sponsors, Be Ultimate. And you see the uh, injury sub with Circuson coming and Miller coming on uh, for him. But nonetheless, LaBelle just steps out with the assist to Pet Petsonuzzo. Uh, the, marks, uh, the mark of Miller did nothing to stop that throw. Some discussion, but the result is a uvic point they are still trailing by one queen leading seven to six in this second half of this open division grand final so only one point was scored up win meaning on your left hand side of the screen and that break point was scored by the University of Queen to conclude the first half of this game. Yeah, Queen's uh, trying to stack up those lines there at the end of the half to uh, get themselves that break. And you see it again here with Uvic, uh, Petsonuzo staying on to LaBelle staying on to try to get the, the break of their own. So we have... An hour five minute played into this game, which is intended to be 90 minutes long. So still 25 minutes to go, unless one of these two teams reaches the 15 point mark, which is probably not going to happen based on the pace we've seen so far. But hey, who knows what can happen? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Uvic has more than enough time to get back in this match. Essentially, what they'll need is to get a quick turn here off of their zone from Queens, uh, but we have Kennedy shooting a pack of players. And Park winning this aerial battle, the tallest player finishing the course of this back and hawk by Kennedy, providing Queen their eighth point, taking back a two point lead in the second half of this open division final. And not much you can do against that. Uh, you know, Park probably like 6'3", six, 6'4", six, maybe even 6'5", with shoes on. Just uh, just going up and over top and reading the disc so well from that hook from Kennedy. 
So that was a quick point. And we just said that looking at the pace of the game, we'll more likely won't get to the 15 point mark. But hey, if those possession are scored like in the two passes, like we just witnessed, we might end up reaching the 15 point mark. One thing's for sure is that we'll have a new Open Division Canadian champion this year. Last year, Manitoba won it. Yeah, last year, Manitoba winning, beating the University of Ottawa in the final there. And the year before that, you had the University of Montreal winning the title. Uh, so over Queen's University, I believe. So we're definitely going to get a new champion. Uh, and UVic, to get back into this game and get themselves back into that conversation of uh, the championship, they're just going to have a nice, clean offense here and try their best to get a break back. So UVic here. Looks like Queens is in their zone. Juvik, nice flick, reaching out to LaBelle at the break mark line. Juvik, Fenenuzzo, wearing number zero. One to one defense by Queen, it's partially blocked, but no, it finds Baird. Was that, that caught in? Yes, confirmed by the observers, and we just witnessed two points within like less than 60 seconds, I would believe. We just said that the pace of the game was slower. We will not reach out to the 15 point mark, but who knows? Yeah, the, the pace of the game definitely speeding up here. Both offenses coming out with clean holds for the past two points. And it just seems like the wind, they're getting used to it. The wind's dying down a little bit and they're running, they're making smarter choices. They're not just hucking to nobody, putting up 50-50 discs. They're just, uh, putting some edge on these discs so no one else can get to it and just being smart overall with the shots they're taking. One point apart. Queen is leading eight to seven, but they are on offense on your left-hand side and they have the win up their back while we're feeling some kind of a little rain, like a little drizzle, I'd say. Yeah. How would you describe what's falling on us right now? I think drizzle is drizzle? right. I don't know what the French translation is for that word, but I made the mistake of wearing glasses today. So I'm going to need some windshield wipers for these bad boys to keep seeing this amazing final going on right now. Queen on the receiving hand, signaling they are ready to receive Victoria's pull, which will be done by Tiel. And I think Uvic is hoping to set their zone here, but they're hoping that they don't have a one huck score. You see Park and Miller going deep. Again, the two tallest player, player by Queen going long. There's a foul call in that kind of a rumble-ish but it seems like it is not contested by LaBelle. Two players shaking hands, no harms done, fortunately. So there will be a Queen's disc on the goal line. Great pivot and quickly Park get himself open to secure once again a two point lead for the representative of Queen University. It's 9-7 for the Yellow Dreams. Yeah, so just to break down what happened there, uh, Miller calling the foul on LaBelle, saying that he obstructed his ability to catch the disc. It was no contested, so LaBelle just admitted that he did foul Dax and stop him from catching that disc. So uh, all Miller had to do was just tap it in, tap it in the front of the end zone, and then he just found Park there for the score. So in ultimate Frisbee, Yes, it is a non-contact sport. Sometimes contact does happen, but you can't obstruct players' abilities to catch the disc. So when that happens, that's when those foul calls occur. We are running at a pace of approximately 1.8 minute right now. So are we trending to reach out the 15 point mark? So far, Queen leading by two point nine to seven we have started this game at 1 15 eastern time and it's now 2 25 so we're an hour 10 minute 70 minutes out of the 90 minute intended for this so now. yeah that's dixon there with the pull you see just out of bounds there unfortunately so uvic will probably rush to get it centered as quickly as they can. Who 
will be the receiver. Will that be LaBelle still chasing down the long pass by either Pete Nuzzo or Pete Nuzzo, the two brothers wearing number zero and 51. Queens trying to shut down that long pass. There's a small, small window finding number 27. McLaren Petinuzo with a nice little lady finding LaBelle crossing midfield. Looking for a reset. Reaching out to Petinuzo, now to his brother. Nice pass and run. Nice zone defense by Queen. Looking to shut down that long attempt, but nice lady catch. Great grab by Petinuzo LaBelle in the red zone. Still, Queen hanging on to their zone defense, but transitioning to a one-to-one -one defense. It was a travel call. This will go back quickly, put back into play. LaBelle with the disc, great fake back end, resetting in the middle. Great pass and run by number seven. Looking for a reset on the open side. It was a pick call. Dixon was defending, Petenuzzo ran into LaBelle. And I believe this uh, Petenuzzo Tomlinson matchup is a, another teammate matchup, both of them playing on Team Canada U20 a couple summers ago, so they probably know each other very, very well. Great grab at Petenuzzo, but the landing is too hard. He loses possession, but what a great effort, showing all his athletic skills. Queen on yard to Dixon. Dixon back to Arnyard in their own goal line. There's an injury call. Petinuzzo is landing. He seems to have some damage to his core. Yeah, it seems like that ground strip there just uh, winded him a bit probably. So him taking uh, some time off the field to catch his breath, not the worst decision. It looks like Feel will be coming on for him. And Park taking a sub on now for Queens, taking off Tomlinson. So two fresh bodies on, and we'll see if they can. Uh, this can help Queens get yet another upwind break because we know how strong of a thrower Park has been this game. Dixon on yard. Gunnar Sequeira, three handlers. There's Park also, so four handlers for Queen. Four of their key handlers looking to go 70 yards upwind to potentially score a second break point in this open division finale. Who will be the new 2023 champion of the University Series? Will that be Victoria or Queen? Lady gutsy throw by Park, finding all your own yards. At the brick mark, Queen moving onward, still patiently going from left to right. Guna Sequeira calling a timeout. So Queen looking for some room to breathe. They are almost midfield. Guna Sequeira is a great veteran calling a timeout. Let's say let's settle. Let's take advantage of this break opportunity with a great position. What a great call. Yeah, you know, uh, after you almost drop a disc, you know, it's not a bad idea to just... Uh, Call a timeout to settle, settle the boys, settle the nerves potentially. I don't know, Devon. Have you heard Coach Galbraith talking to his players say, "Hey, let's call a timeout"? I believe I heard him talk to his players saying, "Hey, maybe we should call a timeout if you, you know, just take a breath." Yeah, Coach Galbraith is definitely not one to shy away from yelling from the sideline, uh, whether it's instructions or you know those happy words of encouragement you like to hear from coaches. But um, yeah, he's a very vocal coach, very thorough coaches. Uh, and he's definitely part of the reason why Queens has been able to take such a stranglehold on this game here. He was also the coach of Team Canada U24 last summer in Nottingham while the World Championship were hosted. Yes, coach, and uh, the mixed uh, the mixed team from Canada. Yes, and he'll uh, be coaching the World Ultimate Club Championships next uh, summer in uh, in Australia with the now senior mixed team. So very very busy coach. 
very talented also. So we're Queen. back here. With the disc, Guna Sekera Park, exchanging the disc, centering it to Dixon, the 2023 Huck and Heart recipient. Yeah, and that uh, that being a player award, uh, Dixon voted. On, Dixon was voted and appointed by the other Division One teams last season. Just showing the impact that he's had on this Queens team, you know, him coming back for another year uh, after a summer with a Red Circus from Halifax. So now we're seeing Queen being very, very patient. Uvic zone defense not allowing much room to move onward. Now some pass and running by Gunasekera trying to create those small windows into Uvic's D-line. Dixon to Park. Now we're seeing Onyard in the middle as a popper. Great handler, great cut in by number 15, McFadden. Dixon still on the sideline. And you see this, uh, this Uvic zone just coming apart a little. You see the holes opening up probably due to fatigue of the players and there's just being too much uh, too much uh, space in between. Uh, people yelling from the sideline to call a timeout and Queens taking their second timeout of the point, I believe, just really running down the clock here. Uh, what do you think about that strategy to run down the clock and secure, to try and uh, secure the win for yourselves? Well, you know, it's part of the game and you have two timeouts, might as well leverage them and maybe coach uh, the Queen's coach didn't like what he was seeing, so he said, well, okay, let's sometimes to, to, to reset and, and discuss and make sure we, we are in the driver's seat, so we like to make sure we remain in that driver's seat and how a better way to win the game than score another break point. The Queen's has only scored one, while Uvic is still hunting down their first break point. So this game has started at 1.15. We are now at 2.33. Yeah, and it looks 78 like... 78 minutes has been played. Only 12 minutes remaining to this game. So clock management is part of the game. Clock management, definitely part of the game here. And you see that Queens is basically at the same level that they were when they called the previous timeout. So maybe also a timeout to think about how they can break through this zone and get more yards from each pass. Park, Dixon, Guna Sekera, on yard right in the middle. They're being supported by Sigerson on the left-hand side and McFadden on the right-hand side as poppers. Queens being very, very patient, not taking any chances. Sigerson on the sideline, faking it, finding Dixon. Another break. Uvic zone defense hangs in there, just holding back Queens from any yardage. Statistically speaking, one pass out of 10 will be incompleted, but Queen is kind of denying that statistic over the last few minutes while we hear the horn blowing we will be playing the last point of this final so we might, might have misleading you saying there was 12 minutes but it was two minutes actually and queen leading now by two so whatever the output of this point they will be crowned new canadian champion for the university series and dixon puts an end to the game Scoring the point, making Queen the new national championship for the 2023 edition. Congratulations, and, congratulations to the yellow jerseys. And how poetic it was for Dixon to catch that final point. Him being a fifth-year senior on the team, a real vocal leader in the group. You can just see the elation on all of these Queens guys. Um, at two years ago when they had this amazing rookie class, they just lost in the final last year. Uh, they ended up going 0-3 on the Saturday and just missing out on the bracket altogether, coming, I think, like 6th or 7th. And then this year, having 
another dominant season, going undefeated, winning Steel Town, undefeated, winning the Eastern Championships, and now undefeated at the Canadian University Ultimate Championships. An undefeated season on the way to a gold medal. But shout out to you, Vic. They had a shorter roster flying here from the West Coast, only playing one qualifying tournament. Even though this is early season for them, their real goal is to qualify for the USAU uh, College Championships in the States there, probably in May. Coming second with a bit of a short squad, missing out on their coach, Olivier uh, Telfer. Uh, so not to be understated what that team was able to do and get that silver medal. There will be celebration in Kingston over the few, upcoming few hours. So Queen University being crowned the Open Division Champion for the 2023 edition of this University Series. Thank you so much for being with us for this webcast. Looking forward for our next and last webcast, which will start at 2.55 featuring the women's division of this university series. Congratulations to Queens once again. My name is Etienne Fournier. Thank you very much, Devon, for doing such an amazing job of providing so much insightful insights. So thank you very much and take care, everybody. Go outside and throw some discs. Cheers.